Hello, I'm Laura Chevalier, and I'm a Developer Relations Engineer on the Google Ads API. In this video, I'm going to walk through a code example for enhanced conversions for web in the Google Ads API. We already have an example available, so instead of writing it from scratch here, I'm going to visit the existing example and talk through what it's actually doing and highlight requirements and best practices as I go. If you haven't yet watched the introduction and usage flow videos, I highly recommend you watch those first and then return to this video. One last thing, if you find this video helpful, let us know with a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to be notified about future videos. With that said, let's get started. You can find the code example in the remarketing folder within your client library's examples directory. I'll be showing the Python code example, but each client library has an equivalent example. Let's take a second to revisit the overall flow of enhanced conversions for web to understand where the code example fits into the bigger picture. Enhanced conversions for web is particularly useful to recover conversion types that aren't necessarily observable in certain browsers today. For instance, conversions based on video views or cross-device activity. When a user converts on our website, we capture some information about them at the same time as the Google tag sends a conversion and an order ID to Google Ads. With the user information we collected at conversion time, we can look up additional user identifiers in our first-party data store and then securely send all of the user identifiers, normalized and hashed, to the Google Ads API. The extra information allows Google Ads to map the converted user to the original ad interaction, for instance, the video view, and report a conversion on our campaign. So where does the code example fit into this picture? The code example happens as part of step four. It takes our first party user identifiers, normalizes and hashes them, and then uploads them to the Google Ads API alongside an order ID, the same order ID that the Google tag sent to Google Ads when the user converted. There are some additional optional details we can send, which we'll see in a bit. Now let's get back to the example. The first step of enhanced conversions for web in the Google Ads API is to normalize and hash the user data. In our code example, we use sample data for the sake of demonstration. In reality, you would likely read first-party user data from a file or directly from a data store. This data should include the user data from the conversion, plus any additional identifiers you looked up from your CRM or database. Enhanced Conversions for Web accepts identifiers for email address, phone number, and physical address. Note that physical address must include first name, last name, home address, and zip code in order for Google Ads to use it as a match key. We have two functions to normalize and hash our user data. This normalize and hash function, which removes white space, lowercases the string, and uses the SHA-256 algorithm as required to hash the string. And then we have the normalize and hash email address function, which includes some additional logic to remove any periods before the domain in Gmail or Google Mail email addresses. Once it's done that, it calls the regular normalize and hash function. Having implemented our normalize and hash logic, we can construct the conversion adjustment that we'll send to the API to enhance our web conversion. First, we create the conversion adjustment object and set the adjustment type to enhancement. Then we plug each normalized and hashed identifier into its own user identifier object and add those user identifiers to the user identifier repeated field within the conversion adjustment. Email address is the minimum preferred user identifier, but we also check for a phone number and for all of the components of the physical address. Note that email address, phone number, first and last name, and street address should all be hashed. However, do not hash country, state, city, and zip code data. Each conversion adjustment can contain up to five user identifiers in the user identifiers field. One common mistake here is that people will try to put all of their user identifiers into a single user identifier object. Each user identifier object can only contain one identifier, so trying to set multiple identifiers will just overwrite previously set identifiers. Instead, make sure you have a separate user identifier object for each identifier. Other than the user identifiers, there's some information we're required to set on each conversion adjustment. First, the conversion action resource name, which must be for the web page conversion action we set up on our Google Ads conversion customer. Check out the introduction video if you're not sure what that is. 
Next, we set the order ID, also referred to as the transaction ID, which uniquely identifies the conversion event and must match the order ID that was sent by the Google tag when the user converted on our website. Then we have some optional fields we can set. There's GCLID date time pair, which allows you to include the GCLID or Google Click identifier, and the conversion date time of the conversion. If you have these fields available, we recommend including them to improve performance. Then there's the user agent field, which should match the user agent of the request that sent the original conversion so that the conversion and its enhancement are either both attributed as same device or both attributed as cross device. With those fields set, we can proceed to upload the conversion adjustment to the conversion adjustment upload service. You must upload to your Google Ads conversion customer and make sure to set partial failure to true. These are required for all conversion uploads, not just enhanced conversions for web. Note that setting partial failure means any errors are returned in the partial failure error field of the API response. When implementing enhanced conversions for web for the first time, make sure to review and address these errors. Once your implementation is complete, it's best to review your uploads by querying for the latest offline data diagnostics report. You can find guidance on that linked in the video description. Okay, we've gone through the whole example. I hope you found value in this walkthrough. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave us a comment. Thanks for watching and see you next time.